What's up, you all? It's Brittany Chanel coming at y'all with this morning's inspirational talk. This inspirational talk, y'all, is going to be important because it's going to be about new beginnings, like a fresh start. Um, this is not about New Year's resolutions or anything of that nature. I'm just talking about sometimes in our lives, we'll go through seasons where we'll just God will just strip everything, like everything that we used to know, everything that we used to love, it will change because in order for us to become a new creature, or not a creature, a new creation um, in Christ Jesus, things of our past have to be stripped. In order, you know, like even when you're getting in your house, like, um, you know, like people call it spring cleaning. Like I notice, like, okay, at home, certain seasons like if we've had furniture or things for a long period of time it's time for that to go because the devil likes to keep you stuck in the past he likes to keep you stuck on old feelings and if you just think about your body if you didn't constantly cleanse your body of toxins and nasty things your body will become slow or sluggish think about your computer if you didn't constantly delete old pictures and photos and things off of your computer, it would slow you down. So holding on to past stuff sometimes holds you down. So sometimes you need to be a fresh slate to be wiped clean. You know what I mean? You just need to be able to start again sometimes. It's a, a newness. You know what I mean? Hold on, you all. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, you all. I thought I heard my door. But anyway, sometimes you just need a newness. So... Let's define the word new. So new means not existing before, made, introduced, or discovered recently or now, or discovered recently or now for the first time. So you don't want to carry around things from your past, sins of your past, things that are things that you probably did that are sins, iniquities, because... Think about a clear glass of water or like if you're making coffee, you're not going to keep using the same pot of water or tea. You get what I'm saying? Because the water then will become filthy. But the best thing about God is God can do a new thing in your life. He can cleanse you, restore you, replenish you. It's beautiful. So let's talk about what God says about newness in the Bible. So I know like throughout my life, I've had periods of newness and newness sometimes is uncomfortable because sometimes we're stuck in our ways. Um, but God is definitely doing new things as I am becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. He's doing a newness. Um, so he's always, to me, like I'm just thinking about examples in my own life. He's always constantly doing things that shake my life up like you know you're used to going that same route to school you're used to going that same route to work and one day like and it makes us uncomfortable but the beautiful part is it makes us uncomfortable so that we can learn from the experience so we gotta literally you're getting out of disequilibrium to get back into equilibrium to get into disequilibrium again because that's how growth happens growth happens when in our minds, we're ex we experience new things. That's how growth happens. Growth happens when we experience new things, try new things, and they make those neural connections in our minds, like those neural pathways in our mind. When we learn new things, when we try new things, like, you know, we try different foods. This is how we know we like this sort of food. We try, we travel different places. This is how... We're like, wow, these people live like this in this culture over here across the world. But we live like this over here. So it's about newness helps us create connections, relationships. To me, also newness 
can help you reach higher ground and it can often help you to grow if that makes any sense so let's talk about what god thinks about newness because i'm thinking about all these examples of newness that happened in my life so second corinthians 5 17 therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new so just think about all of this even in this earth this world all it is that we know it to be our our brain cannot even fathom or have a full understanding of like the the full capacity of god like we've only seen a glimpse but i know there's way more to more to god than what we actually see and understand and what's what's seen and tangible like i'm like we don't even have an understanding really fully of the unseen. That's what I'm not worried about, but that's what I'm kind of curious about. So just think about this. This whole world is going to pass away. Everything that you know it to be, it's going to be a day when it's no more. Like the people, as I said, that they have their trust in money and things and, and places and in investments that is going to be no more because God is going to wipe it clean and he's going to put forth you know this is going to be the kingdom of God the new kingdom that is God's here after everything is removed so that is like a newness like just like how you would clean your house or you know have you ever heard of business corporations saying it's time to clean house. Like they get all the bad apples out the police department. They get all the bad apples out of their company. That is basically what I feel is going to happen. It's going to be a, it's going to be judge, it's judgment season now. And it's going to be a house cleaning. Um, because all of this is going to pass away. The Lord's newness is going to come forth and create what he intended for his kingdom to be. Um, all of these evil, wicked people are going to perish away and everything that he intended the kingdom of God to be, it is going to be so. So, this is what I told y'all was important. Um, so first I'm going to, it's in Isaiah. So first I'm going to read Isaiah forty-three nineteen to you. And it says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Because um, this is perfect, you all, because it makes me think about, have you ever dealt with people and they're in a tough situation and you're kind of encouraged, trying to encourage them and they are so stuck on things of how it went in the past or negative mindsets and how they feel it's going to go that they're not... Um, having an overstanding of number one, who God is and that God can make a way out of no way. And he can switch something in an instant where you thought it was going to go this way and it'll go this way because he intended it to go in the way that he wanted it to go. So this is why I like the part. Hold on. I touched this screen, honey, this touch screen. It says, um, I will even make a way in the wilderness, in the rivers, in the desert. So if you look in your natural mind, the wilderness, there's nothing there. So it's like, how would you make a way in the wilderness? Um, the desert is a, is a wasteland. It's barren. There's no rain. There's no water. So the Lord is saying, I will make rivers in the desert. And rivers, you know, he was like, I'll make a way. There will be rivers in the deserts and a way in the wilderness. He'll set your path for you in the wilderness. Because God is extraordinary. He's always working and twisting, shaking things up, especially in my life. Like, I'll be used to, um, all my life, I was used to celebrating holidays like Christmas and this and this and this. And then out of the blue, he just exposed to, you know, my family that you're not supposed to be celebrating these holidays. So, I just had to just wipe that clean. I, like, I just had to cut that out of my life and it was heartbreaking at first because it's like wow the I've been doing these things for so long but when you realize that God is doing a new thing and sometimes 
you have to leave things or traditions from your past um, behind you so that you can move to your next level and, and get to the destiny that he has for you in your life. So pretty much Isaiah 43, 18, 19 talks about this when it says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. So people always get caught up on family traditions and they get caught up on um, things they used to do in the past, like old pictures, um, old baseball jerseys, just, just old mementos. And it's like, you don't need to focus on things of the past because that things of the past can honestly set you up um, for you to be stuck, for you to be stagnant, not growing. You could be stuck in a place mentally and spiritually because you're reflecting so much on the past that you're not looking at the present and the future and what God, and you're not listening to the voice of God to tell you to progress forward because with God, it's forward movement. There's times of stillness in the prayer. Like sometimes you, it's time for, you know, he'll have you being still waiting on him, but there's still going to be some progression there. You thinking about the times when you was a in the club, everybody in the club, what you need, you know, like all of that stuff, that type of stuff will get you caught into thinking of thinking about the sins of your past, thinking about things and linking up with people. Cause it makes you feel good that there's a familiarity there and it'll have you, you know, next thing you know, you at, um, you at happy hour, then you done lost your sobriety. You're off the wheels. Cause you done linked up with at a class reunion. You done linked up with somebody that you was cool with from high school and they got you at the club. They got you doing all kind of crazy stuff. They got you, um, you know, doing all kind of things that you used to do, but God switched that in your life to make you a new creation. And dealing with people that are in the dark and you being of light, they cannot coexist with each other. It's one thing, there'll always be a fight. They can never coexist with each other. You're going to irritate the person that is in darkness because they're in darkness. That is the kingdom that they're in. And you are going to be irritated by darkness because that is not your life anymore. And it's not to say that Christ will not have you ministering to people who are in the darkness, but you are not to go over there with them. You get what I'm saying? And it'll be, he'll have it so that, you know, one person can plant the seed. One person can water the seed to help the person get out of darkness. And eventually they'll have a newness in their life and they'll be a new creation. But um, you ain't minister to, ministering to nobody and they and, and you trying to club with them. That don't work. Evil can't cancel out evil. So that type of stuff. I'm just, I'm using that as, as an example because I had a friend in my life where I was the light from the kingdom of light and the person was clearly from the kingdom of darkness. I, Cause I was like, we're from two different worlds. I told the individual that, um, when he was hanging out with me, he was making positive choices for himself. The person, they were going upward. They were forwardly progressing. And then all of a sudden he had friends from the past trying to pull and draw him back over there like you you thinking you too good and what's this you trying to change your life type of stuff because the devil wants you stuck he doesn't want new thought he doesn't want new when you repent it's a newness of, of thought like I'm changing my actions about sin I'm changing my mindset about things that I was once doing it's God allowing you to Think, think and reflect on what you did to change. But when you constantly reflect on things of old or hang out with people from your past life, it could draw you back into sin. That's why he asks you to not reflect on that type of thing. But let's read the whole thing. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God can make a way out of no way. And he's definitely always forward progressing, especially even looking at things in my life. So Ephesians 
4, 22, 24 is good too, because it says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Hold on. Got to pull it up, y'all. Pull it up. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which is after, af, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So conversation is important too when you're starting a new beginning. You cannot entertain conversations with people because um, it makes you guilty by association. You cannot be out here wishing God speed the people that is out here living all crazy and all of that. But that don't mean you have to condemn or judge them either. I'm just saying I had to learn um, that, you know, sometimes you'll have friends that they'll call you to, you know, call you to gossip and you may have to uh, cut that phone call short because you cannot entertain conversations either. Conversations will get you caught up okay um caught up in the thinking about the old things you used to do if you're entertaining phone calls at a certain time of night and all that other stuff come it says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man so you might have to cut off certain conversations and certain types of conversations with people um and it's no shade to them because everybody is on their own journey in their journey um, to be in the kingdom of God and in their journey to, to pick it, pick their stuff up and follow Christ. Everybody is on their own journey. So they are going to be at their own level, but you don't need to entertain old time conversations where people are trying to, you know, lure you to gossip or get you to, you know, you once used to hang out with them to do this. And now they want to call you and act like you all uppity because you don't want to talk about that anymore. It's just because that will hinder you and also it can threaten your sobriety, your clearness of mind. It can threaten you. Like I know like there was a lot of friends that I used to have, um, and, you know, we used to have conversations or whatever, but it's like when you mature spiritually and naturally, the person's conversation can become old to you because you're not at that level anymore. And you don't got to disrespect the person or try to judge the person. Um, cause that's what I learned. Um, too, like the person is where they're at. That's where they're at. So to change that situation, like I wouldn't entertain certain stuff. Like if they're calling me to tell me, you know, good stuff is going on in their life. I'm like, okay, good. But some people, they'll call you to gossip. Some people, they'll call you to tell you they up to no good. Some people will just call you to say all kind of crazy stuff. And, um, I'm just at the point where I'm like, uh, uh, I'm not entertaining that type of conversation. I'm not trying to, um, deal with that type of conversation because it could have you thinking about the, the things that you used to do in your former life, which can, you know, resurrect your mindset to be thinking of things of sin and oldness and, and not where you need to be at. Because it says the, um, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And it says, be and be renewed in, in the spirit of your mind. Renewed. Let's look up the definition of renewed. So we're going to look up renew. So to renew, it has that R-E. Resume an activity after interruption. Recommence, resume, take up again, come back to, begin again, start again, restart, reaffirm, reassert. So you it's, it's you have to put off the old conversation and then resume your clearness of your clear minded, clear headed self and be renewed in your spirit. So meaning that you your spirit of righteousness, the spirit of the Holy Spirit is renewed in you, it's restarting, it's revamping, it's reaffirmed in you. You got to put aside the old things, the old conversations, so that you could resume on your journey to being closer to the Father, being more intimate with the Father, and you're picking up. Notice that I said to take up again, like you're taking up, 
you know, what you need to take up, you picking up your tools that you need to put on your back. Like think about it in the biblical times, you picking up your stuff and just moving. You're going, you don't have time to look back. Them folks look back to Sodom and Gomorrah, honey, and they turn back into pillars of salt. Cause you cannot be, you can't go forward. Even if you drive in a car, you can't go forward. If you looking back because you can hit something in the front, you could hit a, a roadblock. You could hit anything in front of you. You cannot move forward if you constantly looking back at the past. And that's a trick from the enemy to get you stuck. And he will sometimes use people to do it. Y'all better watch them conversations. And it says here, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So once you are a new man, a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you seeking after God, your new spirit, the newness that he gives you is going to be created in righteousness and true holiness. It's going to be not the things that was your former, like you was born in sin and iniquity. It's not going to be anything like that. Nothing remotely like that because it's from two different kingdoms. One is righteousness and true holiness, God-like, and the other is wickedness, darkness, He'll call you out of that darkness into his marvelous light. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about newness in your life. Get rid of the old stuff. Like if you got old gifts from old boyfriends that had you at a place and you was not, or girlfriends, and just get rid of it because you don't want to be thinking about the past and you're trying to make a future. Just think of even about a relationship with somebody. They don't want you bringing your old baggage in a relationship. They want you to be forwardly progressing, right? So if that's the case, you all, then you don't want to be that person that is constantly bringing baggage. Think about your relationship with God. God don't want you bringing all of your former baggage that's going to be weighing you down because it's going to prevent and hinder you from starting afresh. Even though he can handle your baggage, but I'm saying, if he's going to do a new thing in you, you have to be willing to let that former life go. So, even if you, okay, even when you, let's think about new beginnings. Sometimes new can, beginnings can start with small mini steps. Small mini steps. And the small mini steps are... This is why I say it can start with small mini steps. Job 8 and 7. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. So sometimes, like even when my mom tells me about my goals and dreams and stuff that I should do, like she tells me to make smart goals. So even when you put forth that little faith, you know, the faith of a mustard seed, you put forth that little bit of effort. You don't know where that little bit of effort can take you. You don't know what you could do. Like, let's say you want to cut back on something. Like, um, you want to cut back on uh, drinking soda. Like, you could put forth a mini effort to, you know, each day drink a little and little bit more water. And eventually, it'll be gone that you wanting to drink soda all the time will be gone from you because you put forth that many effort and it became a new thing for you to do. And you'll start to, it's, it's, it works both ways. Y'all people put forth when they do negative things, they put forth that little bit of effort into maybe smoking them cigarettes or put that little bit of effort into drinking. And then eventually it, it increases the habit increases, right? Think about if you were doing it for positive things if you put forth that little bit of effort to, um, let's say you wanted to start a business, to research, you know, inquire about how do you start a business. That can increase. It says, yet the latter end should greatly increase. So it's like you started off doing a little bit, but that little bit, that little bit of faith, or, and, and you know, cause faith without works is dead. So that little bit of faith with a little bit of work behind it, you know, and then you looking fast forward into your life in the present. Now you have your own business and you're doing whatever all off the one inquiry 
or inquiry about how to start a business because it's the little, little steps. Or maybe you wanted to go back to school and you decided that you only could take one class or evening class. That little step, now looking at your life like, wow, now I'm graduating now. So you never know. It's like you're the end of it or the end of the road to it can be great for you. It can greatly in, um, be increased. I believe because God is the author and the finisher <laughs> and the author, the finisher of everything that, you know, that's why we have many steps to do everything. Like that's why he puts, you know, nuggets and hints about what we should be doing around. You know what I mean? So basically this is, these are my thoughts about new beginnings y'all. Um, these are my thoughts about new beginnings and I hope that you enjoyed this. Definitely make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Brittany Chanel and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can get more inspirational talks.